channel. I am super excited because I got this giant mold in today and I um, wanted to <laughs> I wanted to start you know at least getting a first layer in right away. I ordered this mold uh, from Crafted Elements. And they have a bunch of different sizes, but I wanted to start with, this is an 18 inch, it's like a giant coaster mold. And right now, the, the trays that I do are typically about 18 inches. So that's, and that's how big this, this mold is. The interesting thing about it is, um, this is a mold you can use for multiple things, but it kind of fits the style of things I do because it is, not a shiny mold so if you look in there you can kind of see a little bit of texture on here which means of course since i since i do molds and this the, this part of the um coaster when i do it is the bottom so that isn't going to be an issue for me but if you were going to make something with this and flip it over then you would still have to polish the top because this is a matte mold instead of a shiny mold. So that's something to keep in mind if you're interested. I know that they have other molds and other things, but I haven't fully explored it. I wanted to get this one and, you know, have a little bit of fun with it, see what we could do. I'm envisioning potentially making, well, besides art, what well, your know, wall art, um, a clock. A clock would be super cool. So all we're going to do today is the base layer. So one of the things that we can do with this is put in our base layer and either pop it out and work with it as a flat surface or continue to create something inside this mold. So our base layer is going to be black. And I'm going to use just some acrylic paint, Mars Black. Let's see if that works for us. One of the reasons that I, ch I choose to work with coasters for the channel is because they have the, um, the smooth down edges and a top coat that allows light to shine into them from all directions which really gives you a good a good visual of what that project or design looks like in person so so you can definitely get a look I mean I think you've all probably seen that in person resin is a lot more beautiful I've gone to craft shows and left selling everything, almost everything on the table, but those same items had sat in my shop for a year because I just, no matter how good of a picture I get, seeing it in person <laughs> makes a really big difference. So I learned when taking pictures of the, of the resin that the coasters picture a lot better because you can, the light, the, the light is allowed to filter in from the edges and it kind of shows off the colors that you've used and um, it also gives you that, allows you to see a little bit better the three dimensions. So that will be what will be neat about using a, 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 a mold like this is when in the end you'll still be able to get a visual of it the same way as you do with the coasters. So, so that's another reason why I'm excited about trying this one out is 
being able to get a really good, beautiful view of it once it's done. And you can see how a whole cup of, a whole cup here is still a really thin layer. We might end up having to do more just for the bottom layer, but it looks to me like I can still definitely when doing doing the layers of doing the layers of the design get away with the six six ounces. But getting this bottom layer matte and thick enough to support might need a little more. I'm gonna heat it up and kind of see how it looks to me after that. Cheddar's tired, but he says hi. I'm sitting in here pretty quiet, so first I had to go look around to make sure he wasn't up to naughtiness, but it's just, it's late, but I was excited about the mold. <laughs> so I'm, what I'm going to do is cover this up. That might be a little tricky because it's so big, but I still think this will be It'll be satisfactory for, at least for this layer, to set this tub down. On top of it, I'll find a uh, like one of these tub lids. I normally cover, I have cats, I cover my resin even if, I don't, even if I don't care if debris falls on it. For example, this layer right here is going to be the bottom. So unless like a giant hair gets stuck in it, it you're not really going to see anything on this layer. So it, it wouldn't really matter. However, it's the, the night that I that I um, don't cover something, I'm worried that my cat would get their paw in it. So I always cover for every layer just to ensure that if my cat end up, ends up jumping up here, he won't get resin in his paws. And uh, he learned that lesson when he was a small kitten, but it wasn't resin, it was paint. <laughs> so, so he had a fun bath day, but, but um, I, I just know that he might jump up. So I will see you guys tomorrow. We are back. It's been overnight. And it looks like this actually looks pretty good. So our second layer today is going to be clear and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a galaxy with this. And the, the layer has is set enough that it is giving this more, uh, less pliability, but it's still not stiff. So that's okay. So, so I'm what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to take some, some daughter tools and some glow paint, and I'm going to put some glow, little glow dots in the black on this. And I'm, I'm mostly gonna keep them out to the edges because we do our design down the center. And um, I'm gonna put it on fast motion for that because there's no need to watch that <laughs> in right, real time. We've let the paint dry, which was only, um, I just went and made dinner and came back. And so now we're gonna do our base layer. And for that, I'm gonna be using 
um, some of this. Um, it's called Galaxy Purple Galaxy Mica Powder. And then I'm going to be using a little bit of this Interference Purple, oops, which is also a mica powder. And I'm going to mix in some Just Resin um, Glow. I'm just going to be using a little bit, not even, I would say about a half an ounce each. Purple Galaxy. These are um, color, uh, resin art uh, color pigments, and I do have Leslie Onstad's channel um, saved to my little channels tab to show you where to go to find her amazing pigments. These are just so beautiful. And then we're going to take our the rest of our clear, and I want to add a make it um, make this a slightly uh, transparent like add a little of this purple deep violet is what it's called the Quatex just to give this a slight purple tint to it beads and I have I'm using this micro bead shaker that I got from I got this from Michaels and I'm just gonna get some silver micro beads in here some gold and these little clear ones there and I'm gonna mix it in And then I'm going to pour this in in a spiral pattern like this because these little pearl beads are not easy <laughs> are not easy to spread around in a um, what if they're all in the center it's hard to get them to spread out to the edges so you put it kind of pour them all the way around here and then um, what I'm going to do is take my spatula and I'm going to speed up my spatula where I'm spreading this all out for this part because you you get the picture. So it actually worked really well. I have you can actually see where I poured these little edges, these little micro beads into 
into this on a spiral, but that's perfectly fine because it's, um, I'm going to do my design across here. And so it'll, as we, as we work on this, it will, um, it will look good in the end. So not to worry about that. Um, when you're working with a black background, one of the things that I do regularly stop to check on is the, the micro bubbles. For, because it's a black piece, every little micro bubble will show. So I'm, I have to be patient when working on them and kind of go through and just snag those bubbles as they pop up. And um, I mean, for every layer, once you've got that black on, so that it's not too bubbly. A lot of them go away themselves, but it's good to kind of make a, a big point of taking care of them between each layer so that the bubbles don't accumulate up. And a good example is, I mean, I can think you can see if you can see. When I hit, when I hit the torch on these micro bubbles, you should see the spot. gonna take extra care to pop these bubbles as I as they become evident to me so and because I hold the torch up so high it, it takes it, it takes me probably a little longer to torch up I don't have a big torch I have this little tiny torch I don't need anything bigger than this I just want to make sure okay so th and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my bigger planets, my bigger bubbles, bubbly, um, I call them, they're called pearl beads. This is called, um, these particular ones are called specialty glitter, um, but I call them pearl beads. And then the micro beads really are those, the tiny micro bead shakers. So I'm going to take some of these bigger ones and put them around the edge. I don't want these in the center because they will actually mess up the flow of the resin design or, or the you'll see the resin bump around them and there's no reason for us to put them there so it doesn't matter if you do but I don't I don't typically um, put them in the center just around the edges it's where you're going to see them the most anyway so I have multiple different colors of these and there is I will be putting links to everything I use in the um comments are the, the description of this video so if I forget something just let me know and I'll go ahead and add it and this is a pretty this is our basic layer so after, you will notice that once I get these micro beads on that um, they actually pop up so the resin there the resin isn't deep enough to cover them and that's fine because I don't put the beads in every layer I put the beads in some of the layers or the, the usually the bottom layers like this move them around to where I think they look good and then the next couple layers I might put a couple but for the most part I'm done this is the main bead layer right here pearl bead layer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my beautiful purple galaxy 
and I'm going to do a streak across the top of this. Now the intent behind this particular color is that I will, this is the, going to be the background for our major design. It's going to look like a, a giant smattering of gorgeous stars in the galaxy. couple little planet beads inside there. That's perfectly fine. That's why I put them on the edges is because it will kind of put little bumps in the design. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and put our interference powder in. And this is always a really beautiful accent. Um, interference gives things, I mean this is already a sparkle, but interference gives a gorgeous cloud, cloudy, opalescent appearance. It's the unicorn of pigments, of the uh, mica powder pigments, and they're ex excellent when you mix them with acrylic paints. So I'm going to see if I like this amount. I'll keep going.
So I think that's a pretty good base, already a base. And so if you want, you can take some of your dark, your darker colors and just for contrast, do a few lines of them through here so that you can kind of get some dark light. It's up to you. I don't have very much left, so I was just gonna do some streaks through. Try and use up all of this. Now our design is gonna go right over the top of this. So a lot of this won't be seen. So it's so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just remember that it just you're what you're going for is a lovely backdrop to a very colorful design. So micro bubbles so it looks like we're good to go on the micro bubbles but I did mention before that definitely the pearl beads would definitely be popping up so you can kind of see how they're peeking up over the top of the resin and that is expected we're going to be doing a more layers over the top of this and so the intent at that point is to ensure that once we're done with this design the pearl beads will be completely submerged into the design, so so it will lay flush or smooth as glass, which is, gives it a really neat three-dimensional effect. So, and I'll be curious too if this light color is if there if this if I put enough on here for glow. The I put the gl the glow pigments the pigment in here from um, um, just resin, but if you don't put enough, it will it won't glow. So I could see it kind of melded in there really nicely. So it might be too obscured, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, those those dots do good it does show up a little bit but the dots more so that's how I thought the dots would be super fun in this project so on the next layers if we do some glow we'll be sure to put some some more glow powder in it to make sure that it works really well okay so that's it for this layer I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up and I found a lid so the lid will work a little bit better than that tub cover this up and we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, we are back. Um, so today's layer I'm going to put in color and um, gold flakes and uh, we'll go over the colors I'm going to use real quick and then I will put it on fast motion to add the clear 
<clears throat> resin into this. So I took some uh, my cups and I mixed very small amounts of each color because the design is um, when using all these colors, I need I don't need very much resin, but it's kind of tricky to stir up a tiny amount of things sometimes. So I'm going to be using the um, this little piggy pigments, the neons, Inferno and Grunge, and the Inferno is a neon orange and I've mixed a little less than half an ounce of both of these colors and then of course the the grunge is a neon green I'll be using some let's resin metallic powder and the metallic powder the metallic gold interacts differently in projects than like a mica powder gold or an acrylic gold it has a really gorgeous pooling effect where it pools on top of the resin and kind of floats up to the top and it almost is reflective like a mirror. I'll be using some plain white cast and craft mixed in clear resin. And then I'll be using these two mica powders from Resin Art, uh, Luster Pigments, the Bright Ginger Bloom and the Aquamarine, which are some of my favorite colors. And these do have a shimmer to them the aquamarine is, has a shimmer as well. And then I mix up a little bit of this um, Just Resin and it's a glow powder. And um, I'm gonna be laying this down next to the white to see if I can get a good glow effect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, put, the, put this on fast forward, or I'm sorry, fast motion, and go ahead and lay in a, a clear layer of resin on the, on the um, top of this. And then I'll come back to talk through our colors as we do them. Okay, we're back. I have spread out, and I did use a, and I, once again, I used a cup of white on this. This is a fairly large area, and it's, I guarantee you it's still gonna be a really thin piece when I'm done, well, thin, thinner than you would think it was gonna be. Um, I'm still kind of working a little bit on micro bubbles as they pop up, but I'm gonna be using the heat on the, on the um, design right now, so we'll see how many, you know, how much bubbles are left in the end. So I always make the base of these, of, of this design white because I add the colors next to it because when I mix the white into the bright colors that we're using, it kind of gives off that rainbow effect of multiple colors. So multiple shades of green when we're only using one. So the first thing I do is I, as I make my, place my uh, stripe of white down where I want it to be. And the more white you use, the more vibrant, the more um, vivacious, I always like that word, the, the, the more of a statement that this, this piece will make. Next, so I'm gonna go ahead and place where I want these to go. And tomorrow my plan is to come back. Usually I only do this part one time but I'm gonna do it here and then tomorrow we're gonna to do another layer and I'm gonna come down the center. So today I'm just gonna do these two. And then I'm gonna take this glow in the dark. I don't know why that's not it. This is glow in the dark. I'm just gonna lay it down here just cause I wanna, it's always a little translucent. So that's why I wanna see if we can make this glow in the dark better than any of the other attempts I've made. So, we, I don't want to mess up the color design to add the glow and the dark in, so it's kind of a kind of tricky to figure out how to do it in a way that that will work really nice. Okay. So I'm going to have this side of the the piece have the pink, and usually I bring I'll bring the pink down all the way to the center. This is just a gorgeous pink. And make sure that that pink gets in next to the white. And also we'll see if potentially it obscures the glow of the dark, but we'll see. 
then the next part, uh, piece is going to be your aqua. And so the aqua and the pink mesh turn a little bit purple right here, which is what we want to see. But because the back layer is purple, we're not going to put a whole lot of emphasis on that right. turning purple. So from the ends over here, I'm going to add our bright green. And this is just to make a really pretty color mesh. And on the ends on this side, add a little bit of that orange. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start with this, and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my heat gun. And I'm going to slowly blow, at an angle, blow the colors and mesh them. gun or some torch on it. So it does definitely have a, a really pretty effect and this is at this point is when you can decide maybe if you want the colors to be a little more vibrant. Do you want more pink? Do you want more green? Is there too much white? You kind of decide what you're gonna do. In this case, I feel like there's too much, a little bit too much white. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more pink to these. And pink and, and green. Green I think looks really good right here. But I'm also, this would be the point at which I'm going to add the gold. So when you add the gold in, we're not going to be blowing it as much as I just blew it in just now. So we're going to be adding it and then we're going to be just kind of moving it. I'll show you what I'm saying. Put this on, on low. 
and I'm going to move it just a little bit so that it mixes, but not move it across. So I'm going to move it enough to mix up the gold or make the gold make a design, but then I'm going to come back and put gold flakes down. So I want to have a place to put the gold flakes down. So the next step is to take some gold flakes and some of these iridescent flakes. I like to take these little iridescent flakes and kind of put them on the little outer edges so that they kind of peek up through. And I'm going to um, do that and then add the gold flakes. And I'm going to put it on fast motion because it is it takes a long time to do it. And all I'm going to be doing is connecting gold flakes across the top of the gold. And we're not going to do a whole lot because tomorrow we're going to come back, like I said, and do that that next piece. And so tomorrow, because this one is so light, we're going to do it with way less white so that there's contrast. You've got your dark purple background, then you've got this brighter one, and then we'll have a darker one go across the top and see how we like it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on fast motion. And we will uh, do the flakes, and then I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we're back after, I've, I've let this actually, because it's the holidays right now, I've let, I've let everything sit for a couple of days, so I decided to go ahead and of course pre-mix the colors before I turning on the, the video, so I mixed, I mixed my resin and then literally mixed my colors and turned it on, so I have not been letting this resin sit. So for today's layer, we're going to we're not going to use the white or the neon colors. Instead, we're going to use ginger bloom mica powder, which is the one, the color that the pink that we used before, and the aquamarine. And then our uh, metallic gold. And then a little bit of our glow in the dark from Just Resin Powder Pigments. So what I have done in the before I turned on the camera and mixed my resin was I added a couple of some more dots using the glow paint to give a little bit more of a 3D effect. So you can see we put purple resin over the first set of dots and so I just put some little extra dots on here because I think it looks neat, very three-dimensional. And of course that's optional. And since you saw me do the dots before, I figured you wouldn't want to watch again. <laughs> so, so right now I'm going to go ahead and pour in my clear layer, uh, the clear. I'm going to put it on fast forward for clear. And then from there, I'll turn it back on to do our next color layer. Okay, so 
So I've got my clear down and the next step I want to do is make a little bit more of the galaxy using darker colors so that the whites are a little bit in the background and um, so that's why I'm using less colors today. So I'm going to put it in the same order as before where the pinks are on this side and the green is on this side. So the way I envision it is to have the bright pink come across this way. And then my aqua to match up with it right here in the center. And then I'm just going to put this, a little bit of this glow, kind of intermixed with it a little bit. I've noticed that it kind of takes on, like it, you put it in there and it's almost clear. So I'm just wanting to see how much of a glow effect I can get on this design. Go with that. take my gold and put a few little streaks through this. The I really like how the gold melds with the pinks and the it kind of gives the the pink and the and the um, aquamarine because it gives it kind of a lovely peacock feel to it. So when I go to blow this um, gold I'm not going to fan it out as much as I as I fanned out the um, as much as I fanned out the color. So Go ahead and put this on low. And just kind of move that gold around a little bit. It's a super gorgeous pink.
So another thing you can do if you're if you're not feeling it or you feel like there's not enough dark to it, I like how this looks. And you can kind of see some of these cells forming here, but you could also take some, it's like some, um, some transparent black or some even some dark purple and kind of put it in the middle here, like just kind of to crisp up some of the lines or even in some cases, put it you know across your design. This is kind of, this was what I was going for, but that is a really good option if you feel like you ended up with too much in the, you know, in the middle of this. So now I'm going to take my, my gold and I'm going to trace the gold from yesterday and, or not all of it, but some of it. And then I'm going to put down some flakes and, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the fast motion on the flakes because you get the picture, you know, of what I'm doing when it comes to, um, you know, adding those flakes down, but, um, but I also like to, to film it so you can just kind of see it's, it is, it, they do take patience, but I put down the little ones because I feel like in the end it, it looks, it, I like the way it looks the best. So dropping down the, dropping the gold down on yesterday's just kind of makes it a little bit more crisp as far as it doesn't, right now it's kind of mixed and meshed a little bit. But all I'm really going to do is put a little bit of it on here and then add some more flakes over the top of it to kind of bring the flakes together so it looks like layered. And I always consider it, you know, gold meteorites coming. So you've got layers of them so it looks like they're actually floating. And, uh, and I'm not going to use the heat gun on this gold. I'm just going to add it and then add more flakes. When I said I wasn't going to add heat, I meant I wasn't going to blow it with the with the heat gun. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to start the flakes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on fast motion, and um, that will be that will be it for today for today's layer. And so after this, I mean, we have we'll have one more layer where I add a little bit of accent color, and then the final clear coat to make sure all of the you know the gold leaves are secured underneath and um, so one more color layer to go and then i will um, add a clear coat and then we'll we'll put we'll pop it out of the mold to see how see how this looks now i did realize even today after how many layers we've done it has <laughs> we haven't put enough in here to make this mold pick up and be stiff. So it's still, it's still um, a little bit bendy on the edges. So I thought that was interesting, but it's still, I really, I'm really enjoying using this mold. It's so thick and um, high quality. And I'm glad I decided to give it a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and put us on fast motion and we'll see you on the next layer. Okay, so we're back for the final color layer today. And I've mixed up a tiny amount of this beautiful um, shimmery purple. It has kind of a blue tint to it. And then this is a mica powder called, um, it's the Stardust. And it shimmers actually, it shimmers a, to a lavender and a, I like a, 
a mint green color so it actually doesn't look purple I don't think once I put it in a project and this is a um, it, it's it's a, like a chameleon type color it's called it's just called uh, purple and um, I'll put links in the description for both of these of course so the first thing I'm going to do is add my clear resin and so I'm going to speed that up and then I'll come back for the final part okay so doing this part is just a bit of an accent sort of like adding a little contrast completely optional another thing that I'll I, I will be looking to do is if I feel like there might be some some more gold flakes to the that might need to be filled in at that this point I would do that um, part of that is it gives it a good gives it a good um, three-dimensional effect so the way that I set the gold in yesterday it definitely cured really nicely it looks like rivers of gold going through this super fun so I want to do another one of these so we'll do for the next project I want to do a second one of these with more basic colors no painted dots but using the planets instead and um, show you the difference because it's more of a simple design but you might actually prefer it that way so I figure we'll kind of do another one and then we'll compare them we'll show you know kind of get some opinions on what what you guys prefer so I'm gonna take my purple first and this is a very transparent color so I stirred this understanding that when I put it in the, when I put it in it's going to be sort of like a floating cloud and it's really just an accent color Pretty neat, adding some extra color to it. 
them. From this angle, you can kind of see some of that sparkle. And I really like doing that because in some angles you can't see it at all and other angles it shows up really really well so um so i'm, I'm gonna leave it like this as the last as our last layer and um tomorrow i'm gonna come back and i'm all i'm gonna do is add another clear layer onto the top of this i have noticed that so using on this 18 inch and i've been putting basically dumping or using about a cup of resin for every single layer. And from what I can tell, that works that amount works really good for for the um, the actual layers of the project like doing the color design, but I can tell that the black wasn't enough. So when we pop it out, the black is going to be transparent or a little bit more transparent than what I was wanting it to be. So when we pop it out, we'll look at that. I might end up flipping it over and doing a layer of black resin on the back, or if I feel like it's sturdy enough, maybe we'll just paint the black, paint the black back black. So we'll, when I pop it out, we'll take a look at that. So I'll add in my last um, cup of resin tomorrow, and the purpose of that is to make sure this is completely flush. Even after adding a cup today, there's still a little bit of these um, gold flakes popping up. So once I add my final layer, it will be completely smooth. And then um, from there, we'll decide if we're going to do what we're going to do to the back. And um, I will see you then. And if, if you like, um, or if you find these videos helpful, and you and you have some suggestions or things you would like to see, let me know. Otherwise, you can help me out by um, hitting subscribe, uh, liking this video, or clicking that bell, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so this has been sitting here for not quite 24 hours since we put in the last clear layer. So I'm going to take it out of the mold. Which appears to be extremely easy. That was beautiful. I'm gonna say it's this thing's so big it's hard to find a place to set it down. <laughs> so, okay. <clears throat> so it came out really nice. And this is what I was talking about when I was saying the back of this is a matte mold. So if you were planning on doing a design and then popping it out, you would not have a, a glassy finish. But since that's not how I use molds for me, that was perfectly fine. So look at that. So we're looking at doing a cup, uh, uh, for a cup for every single, every single layer that I did, which was 
So black layer, and then we did a layer with the purple shimmer, and then two layers of, I'm thinking back, two layers of color, and then the final layer for the clear. So, oh, two layers of color, and then a, a layer of the extra shimmer, and then the layer of clear. So quite a few layers compared to what I normally do, but I was kind of expecting to have to, I wanted to do some extra layers because I was worried that this would end up being too thin if I uh, only did two or three. So it's actually really neat looking. So I'm going to give this some more time because I find that if you try to, what I'm going to do is sand the edges and then do a final clear coat. But I find that when you try to do, um, when you try to, I'm um, sorry, sand the lip before it's been sitting 24 hours, sometimes the resin gets gummy. So I'm not, I don't want to um, sand it until I, it's been a solid 24 hours. And then even though it's not fully cured at that point, the resin is hard enough to get a good sand without having some strange gumminess to it. I also think that this, we did really well on getting out all the micro bubbles. So so next you're just going to see, um, actually I wanted to look at this. Let me, let me look at it with the light. This will show you. Okay. So shining this light in the back of the black. It's not, it's a little bit opaque. Well, not, I mean, not opaque enough. So even though it looks great sitting on this black, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a black layer, of, uh, another layer of black resin on this. So that means, I mean, just to paint on a layer. So that means, and then I'll do this, <clears throat> paint on another layer. So that means before I sand it, I'm going to put a black layer on the back of this because I want it to be completely black. So if I was going to hang this on the wall, a white wall, it would be completely black on the back. So that means in the next project, instead of putting one cup of, of black resin for the base, I will be putting two cups because it was just too thin. So it looks actually looks great in here in this light, but then if you shine a light behind it, it's not. So I'll put, I'll do that. Um, what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to prop this up on cups, paint some black on the back. I'm going to use black resin just because of the shine factor <laughs> on me as well. And, um, and then t tomorrow I'll sand the top. And so I'll be doing all that in fast motion just to give you, so you can kind of see, just see it, but not necessarily have to sit through the whole process because it's pretty simple steps. And, um, and so then I'll see you next time on my channel. Thanks for joining me and don't forget to like this or subscribe and hit that bell. And um, don't really, truly don't forget to live your best colorful life. Um, resin for me is my getaway and all the colors really, really add pleasure and joy in my life. So um, we'll see you next, we'll see you for the next project.